In this video, we're going to take a look at quadratic projectile word problems. This is actually a follow-up video to some introductory videos I previously did. If you haven't seen the intro videos, you should probably watch those first. These problems will be a little more complex than what we looked at originally. So let's take a look at this first problem. QB1 likes to show off his arm strength. The height, h of d, of his pass, in relationship to its horizontal distance, which will be d, is shown in the equation. h of d is equal to negative 1 50th d squared plus d plus 2. Everything in this problem is going to be measured in yards. The questions are, what is the max height and how far out does it occur? How far does QB1 throw the pass? And what height does the pass start from? This equation doesn't work for us until we put it in vertex form. So let's do that first. So we've got h of d equals, we're going to take our negative 1 50th out of the d squared. And then we need to divide it out of d. But remember, it's easier to think backwards. When you multiply by negative 1 50, you are actually dividing by 50. So you want to think, what number do I divide by 50 that will give me 1? And that would be 50. It also has to be a negative 50, so that we get negative times negative gives us positive. And then we know 50 divided by 50 is just 1. So this would take us back to our original equation. As long as we go ahead and leave a space, we're completing the square, and put our plus 2 on the outside. Let's continue on by setting up our generic rectangle. And we'll go ahead and put our d squared in there. And then remember, you have to split the negative 50d into negative 25d and negative 25d. We can now start filling out the outside with d times d and negative 25 and negative 25, which would give us our negative 25ds. To complete the square, we go negative 25 times negative 25 and get positive 625. That can go in the space we have waiting for it. Now, remember that 625 is actually being affected by the negative 150. So we actually have to go 625 divided by 50, and that would be a negative 12.5. On the outside, we do the opposite, which is positive 12.5. From here, we can go ahead and simplify to vertex form. So there's our vertex form, and from that, we can easily get our vertex. So let's draw a little picture with our parabola and add our vertex. Remember, opposite, don't change it to get a vertex of 25, 14.5. Sometimes it's helpful to go ahead and label our axes 25 on the bottom and 14.5 on the vertical one. Let's go ahead and take a look at our questions now. First question is, what is the max height and how far out does it occur? The answers to this question come from our vertex. So what is our max height? Our max height is gonna be the 14.5 yards. How far out does it occur? It occurs 25 yards out. These two numbers come from our vertex. Our next question is, how far does QB1 throw the pass? In other words, when does this pass hit the ground? And I'm actually starting to run out of space here. I'm going to have to clear up some space up top so we can do the rest. So hitting the ground means that we're going to actually find the x-intercepts. Or in this case, it would be the d-intercept. Because it will hit the ground when the height is 0. So to go about solving this, we're just going to rewrite our vertex form, but we're going to let h of d equal 0. And now to solve this, I will move my positive 14.5 to the left side where it becomes negative. And then uh, to get rid of multiplying by negative 150, remember that means divide by negative 50. So the opposite of divide by negative 50 is to multiply by negative 50. And when I do that to both sides, I'm left with 725 equals d minus 25 squared. Next, I take the square root of both sides, and I get plus or minus radical 725 is equal to d minus 25. 
Now I'm going to take my negative 25 and move it to the other side. I'm going to switch it around and write d equals. So I have 25 plus or minus. And since this is a word problem, I'm going to go ahead and change my radical 725 into a decimal. And I'll go to three decimal places. So we get two answers from this. We get 51.926. Or if I go 25 minus the 26.926, we get negative 1.926. Now what often happens in a word problem is we're going to use the positive answer because the idea of the negative answer doesn't make sense for this problem. There is no negative horizontal distance. So our answer for how far does QB1 throw the pass is 51.926 yards. Notice that in this problem, compared to the problems in the intro videos, we couldn't just use the shortcut of doubling the x value of our vertex. That's one of the main differences between these new problems. All right, last question. What height does the pass start from? So the starting point for the pass would mean that the horizontal distance would be zero. So what we're actually going to solve for is h of zero, which in this case is two, kind of like our y-intercept. So now we can answer it in words and say that it starts at a height of two yards. Does that make sense, that the pass starts at a height of two yards? Think about it. Two yards is like six feet. So we're going to assume that QB1 might be like, I don't know, 6'4", six, 6'6", six, six, something like that. So it would make sense that he would release the football at a height of about 6 feet, which is 2 yards. Let's take a look at how the last problem is different than the problems that we did in the intro video. In the intro videos, our parabolas always look something like this. Whereas in the last video, the parabola was something like that. So what's the difference going on there? In the intro videos, we always started at 0, 0. But in our last video, we don't start at 0, 0. And that leads to some changes in the way we go about solving it. Let's pretend that the x value of the vertex is 8. And we'll do that for both parabolas. In the intro video, if we wanted to find out when the rocket or the ball hit the ground, we could just take our 8 and double it. And when we went 8 times 2, we got an x-intercept of 16. But in this video, there is a 16 on the graph, but the x-intercept is a little bit to the right of the 16. In order to find the x-intercept, we have to actually solve for the x-intercept in these videos. So we have to set h of t or h of d to 0 and go through the steps to solve it algebraically. Another difference in these problems, our x-intercept, or in the case of these problems, our horizontal distance or our time, would have a negative intercept. And it doesn't make sense that you would go back in time or backwards in distance. So even though that intercept is there, it's disregarded for our word problems. So those are the main differences between these new problems and the ones that we did in the intro videos. Last problem. Go ahead and pause the video, read the problem, try solving it, and then press play to check your answer. So the first thing we have to do here is we have to take that equation and put it into vertex form. So h of t equals, we have to take out the negative 1 over 200. So we would multiply that by the t squared. And then I like to just get the sign right here. So a negative times what will give us a positive, a negative times a negative. And then remember, multiplying by a negative 1 over 200, that's actually dividing by 200. So you're thinking, what number divided by 200 will give me 8? And that would be 1600 t. And then we know we're going to add something, and we'll put our negative 5 on the outside. Let's go ahead and take this and fill out our generic rectangle. t squared in the top left, and then we split the negative 1600t into two negative 
800 t's. Now we're ready to solve the outside, and we get t times t, and then we get negative 800 times negative 800. We complete the square by multiplying the 800s together and getting 640,000. That number can then fill in the space in our parentheses as we complete the square. Now remember, we're multiplying negative 1 two hundredths times 640,000. So that's the same as dividing 640,000 by 200. It would be negative, and it would be negative 3,200. So on the outside, we would put the opposite, positive 3,200. Let's go ahead and simplify this down to our vertex form now. We get h of t equals negative 1 two hundredths of t minus 800 squared plus 3,195. Now, I'm going to run out of space on this problem, so I'm going to keep my vertex form and erase the rest. Now that we have vertex form, let's go ahead and draw a quick sketch of our situation. Got our axes and our parabola. Notice that the parabola starts below ground. Now we're going to use our vertex form and think opposite, don't change it, to get our vertex of 800, 3,195. We can go ahead and mark these on the axes. And now we're ready to look at the questions. When does the missile reach its highest point? That would be the T value of our vertex, 800. So we can write, it reaches its highest point at 800 seconds. Next question, how high does it get? That's going to be our h of t value at the vertex of 3,195. So we can write highest point equals 3,195 feet. When does it hit the ground? So this is the part that's a little harder than what we did in the intro videos. We have to solve this by setting our vertex form equal to zero for the h of t. We'll move our 3,195 to the left side where it becomes negative. Now we got to get rid of our fraction. We would multiply both sides by negative 200, and that gives us 639,000 is equal to t minus 800 squared. We take the square root, and I'm going to go ahead and change it to a decimal, three decimal places, and we get plus or minus 799 and 375 thousandths. That's going to be equal to our t minus 800. If we go ahead and rearrange the order here and put t equals, we get t equals 800 plus or minus our 799 number. So this gives us two answers, but we're interested in when it hits the ground after going up into the air. So we're going to use the 800 plus 799 number. And we end up with 1,599 and 375 thousandths of a second. Notice that if I go 800 minus 799.375, I would get a number less than 1. You can see that on the graph. Less than a second into flight, this missile would hit ground level on the way up. Our last question. How far underground does the missile launch from? This is actually the easiest question to answer. We can get this without doing any work at all and looking at our original equation. Because this is basically just letting time equal zero. And if we put zero in for t, we're left with negative five for our height. So that would mean that it launched five feet under. So that'll conclude our video on quadratic projectile word problems.